Hello and welcome to my Tommy Not in the Neverhood explanation video. It all started with the ScumVM people. They've been working hard on a complete open source re-implementation of all the Neverhood's code. So this means I have access to the Neverhood's data file format. You may have seen my Neverhood extractor. It extracts all the Neverhood's images and animations into cool GIFs like these. You can actually run my extractor yourself if you want to see all this stuff. The download link is in the description. So anyway, I had this silly idea to edit Tommy Nor into the Neverhood and call it an Armor Krog gameplay trailer. With my knowledge from making the Neverhood extractor, I started working on my Neverhood inserter. Inserting the files turned out to be a lot more difficult than extracting the files was. I had to learn a lot more about the inner workings of the Neverhood. I'm only editing the data files the game accesses, not the executable at all. If something doesn't work, I'm not just going to change some code in the game, I'm going to work within the limits and the rules of the original game. The biggest limitation of the game is that every screen can only show a maximum of 256 different colours at one time. The colours you get are in the full 32-bit range and you can change the color palette you're using, but you can only use one palette at a time. You can notice this in the first screen of the game. It uses mostly pink and blue. You can see they also save colors by making the hammer use the same colors as Clayman. I bet this limitation influenced a lot of the design of the Neverhood. The simplicity of the colors certainly help guide your eyes to the important things that you can interact with. These are the original colour palettes for the first two rooms. The first 65 colours are for Clayman. All of his animations are consistent with using only these 65 entries. The first palette index is the transparent colour, and the 65th index is the shadow colour. In the first room his shadow is a bit reddish, and in the second room it's a dark blue. I took a different approach though, I let my Tommy Nor animations use any palette indices they wanted to but I kept the 1st and 65th indices for their original purposes. Then I combined everything I'm inserting all into one image, including the two backgrounds and all the animations, and then generated an optimum palette for all of it. I removed the orange and green from the two backgrounds in order to free up a few more colours. This is why these unchanged animations have a glitched palette. My palette changed those 65 colours that they used. This technique of giving everything in the game the same palette actually gave me quite good results, because the first two screens of the game used mostly the same colours, blue and pink. If I had to do more of the game, I'd need to change this approach. Here's some proof that I'm actually messing around with the data of the game, and that this isn't all just some video editing tricks. Here I'm changing a bit of the inserter code to insert animations as transparent pixels and I'm also messing up the palettes of all the overlay images. Making all the animations appear as rectangles is also fun. These are the four animations that have been made for this project so far. They were all made by Lauren Hall from the Armacrog comment board. I contacted the first person on the Armacrog boards that came to mind when I thought of someone who had made some Armacrog fan art. That was Lauren, and I'm still quite surprised how well my choice turned out to be. She's put in a lot of time and effort already. So here's the basic process of turning Clayman into Tommy Nort and putting it into the game. First you take an animation from the original game, easy because I wrote that extractor, open it up in Photoshop or GIMP, and make your edits. Lauren has made a text file of all the settings you should use to recolor the various parts. You don't need to worry about which colors you use, 
as long as they're similar to the ones in the already existing animations, everything should work out. My inserter program picks the best colors and inserts everything palletized for you. When you're done, save it to a PSD or GIF and drop it into the insert folder. Then I'll run the program and we can see how it looks in the game. If you're interested in helping me with this project, by doing some animations, send an email to blazeroth at gmail.com. Lauren is going away on holiday, so I'll need someone new to help me if I'm going to continue with this project. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and don't forget to back Armacrog on Kickstarter.